So today uh, we're going to study about uh, you see the great uh, pyramid uh, of uh, Giza. So as soon as uh, we mention the name uh, Egypt, uh, you see the first thing uh, that comes to our uh, mind uh, is about uh, you see the river Nile and uh, its great uh, Pharaoh and uh, Moses, uh, how the people of Israel were delivered from uh, Egypt. But not only that one, it also brings us to remembrance uh, its great uh, pyramids for which uh, Egypt is very famous. And one of the ancient seven wonders of the world still existing is uh, only the great uh, pyramid. You see, all the ancient uh, wonders have been totally destroyed except uh, for the great uh, pyramid of uh, Giza. But then uh, this uh, pyramid, what we are going to study today, is not an ordinary pyramid because there are more than uh, 200 uh, pyramids in all over the world. And even in Egypt itself, there is uh, more than 118 pyramids. But this pyramid is one of the greatest uh, and the largest of all. So this pyramid, the height is 486 feet and the breadth, <clears throat> that means uh, at the baseline, it is 764 feet. That means it almost uh, covers uh, 13 square acres. Uh, for your clear understanding, you know 13 square acres means it's almost like uh, equivalent to 10 football grounds. Just imagine until uh, the 12th century, you see, until the 19th century, you see, that was the highest uh, man-built structure in the world until Burj Khalifa was built, you see. And uh, now the Burj Khalifa is uh, one of the tallest structure uh, man has ever built on this earth. This great pyramid, the speciality of it is that it has more than 23 lakh blocks, not stones, big, big blocks and boulders. And uh, some of the, you see, stones, uh, average weight of the stones uh, is nearly more than, uh, you see, 880 tons. <coughs> And uh, the total weight of the pyramid is almost nearly more than 60 lakh uh, tons. And the size of each and every boulder is not a small, small boulder. Sir. You can see in this pyramid uh, photos, uh, you see, there are nearly uh, such uh, immense uh, and uh, large boulders, uh, more than nearly uh, approximately like to 10 to 15 feet high and uh, 10 to 15 feet uh, wide. And the length of it... Uh, is nearly almost more than 100 feet. How they digged, uh, you see, in these uh, quarries uh, in such olden days without any modern equipments, uh, without any modern cutting skill, tools, machines, etc. How they did it, it is still even a wonder today. And moreover, this, uh, you see, blocks are placed one upon the other in such a precise condition that... Uh, there is no uh, cement or any glue put between the two boulders. It's just that uh, the blocks have been placed one upon the other, and uh, there is hardly any gap where you can you cannot even insert a blade in between. Uh, see the two uh, boulders, and how they you see uh, brought the stones, such as huge big stones from the quarry uh, near Mount Sinai. You see, and how they uh, traveled to such a distance and how they lifted it to such a high this altitude without uh, any, you see, uh, modern equipment, all the other then And how they placed it, it is still a modern wonder. And even today, using modern equipment, uh, nobody is able to, you see, uh, duplicate uh, their great uh, pyramid. And uh, Originally, the Great Pyramid was covered uh, on the top uh, with the uh, casing stones. So, so this is the casing stone you can see. Now today, you can see that's the brown thing that you can see today without the casing stone. But earlier, it was covered with the casing stone, the white, uh, you see, limestone. Uh, you see, uh, that was uh, actually uh, in the Egypt, uh, it was shining like a moon. So it was called as a, a jewel that uh, shines in the uh, light. <coughs> Therefore, the Egyptians, they used to call it as Iket. Iket meaning, uh, you see, the glorious light. And even from far, if they, somebody had to identify where is Egypt in a, in a desert uh, without any compass and all, they could clearly see that light uh, and uh, the bright light shining there and can boldly travel towards that uh, direction. They would uh, definitely come to Egypt. But today, what has happened that, uh, you see, the 
caliphs, uh, the the thieves, uh, what have done is they have taken all the uh, white, uh, you see, marbles and uh, built, uh, you see, all their mosque uh, in uh, the Middle East. So originally, the pyramid uh, on the top was covered with, uh, you see, the gold, you see, top uh, corner stone. Uh, you see, but now, unfortunately, none of these things are there. But only, you see, the stones are there, visibly, you can see. And uh, the only man-made structure that is visible from moon, directly from moon, is that uh, the, this uh, pyramid. The pyramid has got so much of stones in it that uh, you can build a two feet wall around the globe, entire globe, a two feet wall, it seems, for the entire globe. There is so much of stones are there. And it is so strong that even the current Egyptian government don't have so much of fund to destroy the pyramid regimes. Even if they want to destroy it, they don't have so much of fund regimes. And uh, this uh, pyramid is located right at the center of the entire globe. You see, we know uh, that the globe is divided into four parts. Uh, that means uh, northern hemisphere, uh, southern hemisphere, you see, and uh, this line, you see, uh, the geographical center of the earth passes exactly at the center of this uh, pyramid. You see, this is really a great wonder. Therefore, you know, the Middle East place is called as, uh, you see, uh, you see, we know that, uh, that uh, this place is called as the Middle East. Why this name Middle East came? Because this, uh, you see, uh, if you make the... Uh, the globe, that means the, the land surface of the earth, uh, if it is divided into four equal quadrants, uh, that uh, center part lies exactly on the pyramid. So this place is called as Middle East. Hence, this name is uh, derived from uh, because of these, uh, you see, uh, geographical uh, specifications. And uh, we know that uh, uh, there is a North Pole and South Pole for the uh, uh, globe. And uh, this is also a great marvelous wonder that uh, this uh, North Pole and South Pole passes, that line exactly passes over the Great Pyramid. Exactly. Without any, just minute one or half a degree deviation just because of so much of years, uh, uh, earth crust would have moved because of so much of earthquake, but uh, it passes exactly. And uh, this pyramid has got mathematical calculations. For example, the pi formula, you know, uh, the relationship between the <coughs> square and the uh, circumference that is calculated by pi, 22 by 7, or 3.14. This formula is already used in the pyramid. And uh, uh, Isaac uh, uh, Newton, you see, uh, recently, uh, you see, he invented uh, the gravitational theory and uh, he also invented uh, the different calculating uh, measuring systems. Like, for example, uh, until, uh, you see, uh, many centuries before, it was only uh, FPS system, a CGS system, or a SI system. Okay, recently, SI system was invented. Uh, recently means uh, a century ago. You see, uh, foot to pound seconds uh, system. This is uh, followed in uh, America, you see. Uh, everywhere uh, you, they travel, it is travel is measured only in miles or foot. Uh, and uh, the, the pounds, uh, that means the weight is measured in pound. And time is me uh, measured in seconds. And uh, if you come to Great Britain, it was measured in centimeter, gram, and seconds. Okay, But uh, if you come to other Asian countries, it was measured in meter, kilogram, seconds. So there... For a scientific calculation, it used to be very difficult. So the entire world, all the scientists joined together. They came to a single conclusion saying that uh, the entire world, let it be measured in uh, SI system, standard measuring, you see, system. That system is already implemented in the Great Pyramid of Giza. And the measurements of the Great Pyramid of Giza coincides with the structure which Noah Ark was built and the tabernacle, which we studied last week, and also the Temple of Solomon. This is really an amazing thing that how this uh, correlates uh, with uh, these uh, God built uh, structures on earth. And uh, moreover, the uh, distance between, you see, the sun 
and the earth is given between the relationship uh, between the you see the perpendicular angle of the pyramid uh, it seems uh, and uh, there are uh, air passages in the pyramid and those air passages point exactly to two different uh, uh, you see constellations one is uh, orion that is mentioned in the book of job and other is draco you see these uh, two constellations uh, directly okay uh, meets the uh, two constellations and uh, this pyramid entrance is there from the entrance okay if you draw a straight line that means from the passage as soon as you go inside the pyramid there is a passage that goes down okay from the passage if you continue to draw the same straight line that straight line comes and meets exactly in jerusalem and that too exactly in the place where jesus christ was born this is also a great wonder and uh, you see today we know that uh, there is a international time zone greenwich uh, mean time you see gmt they say you know huh? so because of this uh, gmt there is a uh, different time zones all over the world but uh, the scientists say that if uh, this uh, time zone is measured from the pyramid uh, the entire world will be having a common time and uh, how many days we have in a year if you see 365 and a quarter day that is also shown in the base length of the pyramid it is exactly 365 and a quarter pyramid inches so with all this uh, <coughs> modern you see uh, calculations with all this uh, geographical uh, uh, scientific uh, mathematical uh, uh, calculations who built it why was it built it and what was the purpose for building it there are so many suggestions some people tell that uh, you see it's actually a coffin of a khufu king khufu was there yeah, he was emperor his body was laid but uh, for your surprise if you if you go inside the great pyramid uh, there is no carvings on the walls of the pyramid as it is found in other pyramids in the same place of egypt in other pyramids there are carvings found in all the places uh, and all the chambers of this uh, pyramids but e this pyramid is so special that there are no carvings found uh, in this pyramid and no tomb is also found and uh, no body was also found if it was a place of a tomb to kept of his emperor certainly something would have been mentioned about them on the walls you see and uh, no grave was found and no body was found no valuable things were found only chambers and passages and moreover compared to the other pyramids which are just next to it this is the only pyramid which is having all the passages above the ground floor you go and see all the other pyramids everything is below the ground floor this is one of the speciality and moreover some people uh, they have a weird uh, you see suggestions to make that some people think that this is a space laboratory built into the days of a pharaoh to watch uh, you see uh, space and this constellations and all some people think that it is a alien launch pad some people think that it is a great vault uh, preserved to build uh, you see great fortunes and all but uh, unfortunately none of these things are found inside but why would uh, anybody build uh, for all these reasons with so much of specifications mathematical geographical scientific calculations if somebody has built it then it is be it must be some uh, super mind uh, and it can be none other than our god so if god has built it as it got any reference to this in the bible yes there is a reference to we going to see that one and um, moreover if god has built it through whom he might have built it there is a suggestion there is no scripture for this one this is a possibility that job who was one of the richest of the persons in the middle east possible that god might have used him to build it also or else we see in the bible about melchizedek who see <clears throat> received tithes from abraham so most probably 
he might also have built it but we are not so sure but anyway let us come to the scriptures now is there any reference for it in the bible yes there is a reference and we will read it in ephesians 2:20 with us ephesians 2:20 with us please read with us and are built upon the foundation of the apostle apostles and prophets jesus christ himself being the chief cornerstone ah jesus christ himself being the chief cornerstone okay have you ever wondered what is this chief cornerstone okay so cornerstone mm-hmm. means okay we will understand see whenever we built a house you see there are four corners in house okay now so uh, which is the chiefest of the cornerstone for house some people tell no brother while building the house no we place on first stone no first stone laying stone that is the chiefest uh, metal eh? if that is the chiefest uh, what about the other four corners sir? is it not the chiefest the lord rest upon all the corners equally now which is the chief cornerstone the bible says jesus is the chief cornerstone and let us see in this pyramid now tell me how many corners are there brother in pyramid brother can you identify mosam brother can you identify how many corners are there in pyramid Hmm? Masam brother? You are there? Four, four corners brother. Oh very good. Excellent. See let us see. One. Correct now? Then yeah. two. Correct. Then three. Okay. Then? Eh? Four. The fifth one you see? Uh, top. Five. Five. Uh, yes. five. So you tell me among this uh, five corners which is the chief if you see the fifth one is the chiefest. Why? if the fifth one is not there the pyramid itself won't be a pyramid it will lose its structure you see hence uh, the top one is there now the top cornerstone that is the chiefest of all the cornerstone because based upon it only you see what is there uh, the structure actually forms uh, therefore the pyramid is a perfect structure you see you rotate the pyramid in whichever way you want you rotate it you slit it you tilt it you turn it upside down you do whatever you want still the pyramid is a pyramid brother it doesn't load it loses a structure at all this is the only structure in the world where you rotate it either way whichever way you want you rotate it is still stays the pyramid okay now is there any direct reference for it in the bible yes there is a direct reference to it in isaiah 19 19 brother read brother is a 19 chapter 19 and 20 brother in that day shall there be an altar to the lord in the middle of the land of egypt and a pillar at the border there of the lord and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the lord of hosts in the land of egypt for they shall cry unto the lord because of the oppressors and he shall send them a savior in a great one and he shall deliver them you see it says in that day which day in the day when the people because of the oppressors shall cry he shall send a savior a great one it seems he shall deliver everybody it seems in that day they shall be an altar to the lord where in the land of egypt it seems sir where it will be it will be a eh? a pillar also it seems at the border and uh, it shall also be at the center of the land of egypt so one thing can stay either at the border or at the center now how can this uh, you see altar and a pillar of lord can uh, be present at the border and uh, as well as at the center of the you see egypt can i think stay at a uh, two places at the same time brother no no how is it fa- possible with pyramid this is possible only with this pyramid only you know this pyramid is exactly at the center of the entire egypt and you know the government of egypt themselves 
I have divided Egypt into two parts. The upper Egypt and the lower Egypt. It's called as the upper kingdom and the lower kingdom. And this pyramid is exactly at the center of this upper and the lower, you see, Egypt. That means it is at the border of both these parts of Egypt. And not only that one, if you consider the entire Egypt, it is exactly at the center. So this verse fits exactly the pyramid of Giza. Hence the word Giza is called because the word Giza means border. Okay. If this pyramid is the one that is mentioned in Isaiah 19 chapter, then definitely God's plan should be there in that pyramid. Now is it there? Let us study today and see. You see, this pyramid, okay, is actually having two chambers. One is the king's chamber, other is the queen's chamber. And below that one, there is a small chamber called as the pit. And to go to this uh, three chambers, there are actually three passages. You see? One, two, and the three passages. You see? And the uh, entrance, uh, through the entrance, a single entrance, we can access all these three chambers. And this entrance is at the 17th floor of this pyramid. That's the original entrance. But uh, original entrance was not traced. Hence, at the 10th floor, you see the first entrance into the pyramid to find out what is inside it. So as soon as a person comes to inside the pyramid, in front of him, there is a descending passage. See, brother? This is called as the descending passage. So the descending passage leads exactly, you see, to the pit. And uh, uh, you see, the descending passage, you can see here, you see? Uh, he is four feet in height. You see, it's not so tall. So, if somebody has to walk in that uh, uh, descending passage, he has to bow himself down partially and walk uh, down this uh, descending passage like this. And uh, as he is walking the descending passage, the descending passage is so slippery, so slopey that. Uh, in between, if somebody wants to change the course, they can't change it. So ultimately, they come and land inside the pit. You see, so this is actually a real photo. You see, if somebody has to walk uh, in the descending passage, this is how they have to walk. They can't straight uh, uh, stand erect and walk. Uh. So you see, you can see here. You see, this is a cross section of the uh, descending passage. So they walk uh, and come uh, into the pit. Uh. So what is the meaning of this one? Uh? So, this means, uh, this represents the broad way. Adam was created perfect in the sight of God. But uh, when Adam sinned, what happened? Uh, he lost the glory of God. He fell from the presence of God. He fell short uh, from the grace of God. Uh, so since that time, you see, through Adam, every man are walking in the broad way. Now, where does the broad way lead to? Broad way leads to death. We have studied this one in Matthew 7, chapter 13 and 14. Huh? Isn't it? It says, so enter into the straight gate. Wide is the gate. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Hence, uh, this uh, descending passage leads exactly to where the pit. Uh, you see? Eh? A pit. Uh, nobody can walk perfectly before God. Why? Because all have sinned and fallen short of the grace of God. Isn't it, brother? Read, brother. Romans, sir. Uh, uh, 323, Romans 323. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Oh, all have sinned. So everybody is walking uh, through this uh, yeah, uh, broad way in Adam. Therefore, it is uh, going to wear uh, death. Now, who was the one who inaugurated this uh, broad way? If you see, it is our forefather, Adam. Adam was the one who ate the forbidden fruit. And through him, sin entered. And because of sin, death entered into this world. And through Adam, all were condemned to death. Dear brethren. So everybody are walking in this pathway and going to death. So we all know, no? in the first class we studied, uh, how did sin enter into the world? Because of uh, which man's sin? Only, 
how many person one person one person that is hedama okay so uh, what is uh, where does that uh, uh, you see the passage lead to it leads to pitta uh, death correct no the pit means what the pit is a you see a small you see hole you see yes, it's similar to the pit the grave uh, bible says no proverbs 14 12 uh, there is a way which seemeth right to men but the end thereof is death you see so nobody can escape from this death and moreover in this pit uh, in the pyramid there is no water what does it mean it means uh, uh, there is no hope for a man if he goes to the grave until Jesus came. Read, brother. Zechariah 9, 11, brother. Hmm. As of thee, also by the blood of the covenant, I have sent for the prisoners out of the pits where is, where then is now water. Ah, where there is no water. You see? Uh, I have set for thy prisoners out of the pit where there is no water. So it is through Jesus that God has set free all the prisoners from the grave. From where there is no hope. They had no hope until Jesus came and died on the cross. Similarly, every man can in Adam are going uh, in the descending passage, the broad way going to death. Now, is there no other way to reach the king's chamber and the queen's chamber, if you see, yes, there is a way. As soon as you enter the church, there is a way that uh, goes upward. You see, that is called as the ascending passage. Again, the ascending passage is four feet of height. You see, nobody can walk uh, perfectly, uprightly there also. But if you can go inside that passage, you can reach the queen's chamber and the king's chamber. But unfortunately, nobody can go in that passage. Why? Because that passage is blocked by a red <coughs> granite plague. You see, you can see in this uh, photo, this is the literal uh, and the real photo of a pyramid. See, if you can see the descending passage, there is an ascending passage also. This passage goes to the king's chamber and the queen's chamber. But we can't go because it is blocked by a 50-ton red granite stone. Nobody can move this one. You see? Therefore, if somebody wants to go also, they can't go. What does it mean? You see? What does it mean? This means the way to eternal life God had given through the law. If somebody kept the law perfectly, they could have achieved these two salvations, the king's chamber and the queen's chamber. See, the king's chamber represents the heavenly salvation, queen's chamber represents the earthly salvation. If somebody were faithful to God, that means by keeping the law, they could have achieved it. So much of power was there in the law. You see, read brother, Leviticus 18.5 brother. Huh? You shall therefore keep my st statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. If any man keep my statutes, he shall live by them. That means if you keep the law, you shall live, you should not die. That's the power of the law. And Jesus was the only person who could keep the law. So rest of all mankind could never keep the law. So law was a failure. Read Galatians 2.21, brother. Galatian? Uh, Galatians 2.21. Okay, brother. Uh, I do not prostitute, uh, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, 
then Christ is dead in pain. Uh, if righteousness came by that ascending passage, if you could have reached by the ascending passage, then death of Christ was vain. So nobody could achieve what the law promised because the law was a failure. It was the way was as if it was blocked. Now is there no other way if you see? Yes, there is one more way. You know, if you come down the descending passage, almost at the end of the descending passage, there is a way that reaches upward to the queen's chamber and the king's chamber. That is called as a well shaft. You know, that well shaft takes you to the same place where the ascending passage used to take. You see, that is the way which Jesus opened. You see, this is not a perfect way. You see, the well shaft is not a very clear cut way as it is, you can see in the descending or ascending passage. It's a rough way. So, this is the way which Jesus opened. Jesus said, no, huh? read Hebrews 10.20, brother. Hebrews 10.20. Huh? By a new and living way, which he had concentrated cons for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Oh, that is to say, his flesh. Jesus has consecrated for us, you see, a new and the living way. That is to say, his flesh. Once Jesus died on the cross, what happened? The veil in the temple was torn. So, similarly, there was no way, but Jesus opened the way. So, similarly, Jesus said, No, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In Acts 4 12, he says, No, there is no other way. There is no other name uh, given for men to be saved than the name of Jesus Christ. So this is the only way. The way through which uh, we can go and attain these two salvations. The heavenly and the earthly salvation. That is the well shaft. You see, the well shaft, as you keep on coming up the well shaft, at the ground level, there is a place called as grotto. You know, the, this, is the, this is a literal photo. This is a real photo. How the grotto looks as that. Just see that uh, uh, stone. You see, just see that rock there. Uh, what can you see in that rock? How does the rock look like? It looks like a face of an animal. Which way? Which animal? Any idea, Mosambra? Can you guess? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can guess. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Lamb, head of a lamb. This is a natural rock stone that is found there. Nobody has come and placed it. It was there while building itself. That uh, stone is retained there naturally. Okay. So what does it represent? Means Jesus is the lamb. Means the foundation of the world. It's like the foundation. Even at the foundation, Jesus is the lamb that was slain for the entire world. So, as you come through Jesus, you see, we have this passage which is two places. So, in the opening, you see, uh, there is a wonderful thing there. All the passages meet at this opening. Huh? Take the ascending passage, take the well shaft, take the horizontal passage, take the grand passage. Everything meets at the one place. Uh, you see, that is uh, the speciality of the place of uh, Jesus. And, uh, you know, because of this uh, way, there are two chambers which as I told you, the king's chamber represents heavenly salvation and queen's chamber represents the earthly salvation. You know about this one very well. Brother, there is different uh, uh, disturbance on your sound. Wait one minute. Okay, now you're able to hear, brother. Now is it okay? Yeah, yeah now it's okay. Now it's okay. Okay, I'll repeat that point again. Uh, one minute. See, through the well shaft, you see, if we come up, uh, we can access the two chambers, the queen's chamber and the king's chamber. What does this represent? The king's chamber, which is at the top, represents the heavenly salvation. The queen's chamber, which is much lower, represents the earth's salvation. So, only through Jesus, there is true salvation. You see, Jesus died not only for Christians, but he died for the entire world. Right over there. Yeah? Read. First yeah. Timothy 14. First okay. Timothy 14, 
for therefore we both labored and suffer reproach reproach because we trust in the living god who is the savior of all men especially of those that believes is the savior of everybody especially of those especially believe now at this age now let us read about the heavenly salvation and the earth. so if you need to go to the king's chamber that is heavenly salvation you need to go to the king's part you see uh, First, brother sorry your sound oh is getting cut huh? yeah it's getting caught in so disturbance is there okay i'll it's repeat the... again yeah uh, i'll repeat again brother okay you can repeat from after the timothy after timothy see yeah if you need to go to the king's chamber we need to pass through three chambers the three chambers are first is the grand gallery second is the ante chamber and the third is the king's chamber so what does it represent you see what did jesus say huh eh? many are called few are chosen few are faithful correct brother many are called few are chosen few are faithful you are able to listen brother yeah i'm this uh, so called chosen and the faithful so we need to be faithful to god until death then only we can attain the king's chamber the heavenly salvation now while going first he needs to pass through the you see grand gallery Now, what is the difference between the grand gallery and the ascending and the descending passage? If you see, the ascending or the descending passage was just four feet height, but this is seven times larger. This is seven feet, you see, wide and twenty-eight feet height. Now, what does this represent? The person who could not walk properly in the descending passage or the ascending passage can now stand erectly. perfectly and walk what is the meaning of this one those who could not walk perfectly in god's sight because of sin are able to walk perfectly because of the grace of jesus that is the ante chamber you see that is the grand gallery you see the grand gallery represents the grace which god has given through jesus and for this You see, grand gallery. There is a support where you can place your hands and pull yourself up. This uh, represents the precious promises and the grace of God, which God has poured us abundantly for us to make a calling election sure. And uh, you see, if you come uh, up to the uh, grand gallery, you see on the top you come to the. Uh, great step before you go to the you see anti chamber now what is the great step a person has to take in his life is consecrate his life to the lord consecration means giving himself and offering his body as a living sacrifice to god that is the main step that is a proper immersion in water baptism see that is represents the anti chamber you see uh before going to the king's chamber from that uh, you see great stone a person has to bow three times you see i i show in the photo you see uh, a person has to bow how many times uh? three times uh. see this is the first time uh, what is the condition of a disciple of jesus what did jesus say if any man wants to be my disciple what he has to do brother uh he need to deny himself very good uh, next uh, uh, take up his cross very good uh, and uh, follow whom follow him very good follow jesus this is the three step if we are faithful in doing these three steps definitely we will reach the king's chamber that is the heavenly salvation so in the king's chamber you know what is speciality there is no coffin there is only a empty box that looks like a coffin but it's not a coffin you see it's it's it is as if there is no lid at all that means uh, you see this is called as a king's coffer not coffin you may not term properly it's a coffer what does it mean 
It means that she's got no lid at all. You know, what's the measurement of it? It is the same measurement of the arc of covenant, which we studied last uh, class. Same measurement. There's no lid on top of it. Huh? That means death is victorious. Death has no power over the faithful church. They are immortal now. Revelation 26, brother. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6, brother. Okay, but just a minute. Okay. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On source, the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and yeah. shall. Uh, shall reign with. And shall reign with him a thousand years. Okay. The death has no power over them. You see, the second death has no power on this. They are immortal. They shall rule with Christ for a thousand years. So this is what uh, the king's chamber represents. Now, we all know, till now, what all we have studied, we have seen that there are two salvations. One is heavenly, other is what salvation, mother? Earthly. Very good. So, heavenly salvation, the faithful church will go. But what about the remaining unbelievers? Where will they go? What type of salvation do they have? Tell me, what is the salvation for the unbelievers? Mm -hmm. Salvation for the unbelievers. Oh, those who don't believe Christ now, will they be mm -hmm. saved or not? Mm, uh, I think this God, so... God, has a, God has made a plan for them or not? Yeah, on thousand years, no. Yes, that is the earthly salvation. Very good. Uh. In the thousand years, when Jesus is going to return, he is going to rule on this earth for a thousand years. All the unbelievers will be resurrected back on this earth. They will listen to the truth. Their eyes and ears of understanding will open them. They will also come to salvation, but not to heavenly salvation, but to earthly salvation. This earthly salvation itself is shown in the queen's chamber. How? Huh? You know the speciality of this queen's chamber? There is a horizontal passage that goes to the queen's chamber. And this horizontal passage can be equally divided to seven parts. You see, equally divided to how many parts? Sir? Seven parts. The first six parts is only four feet of height. But the last seventh part, you know, it is seven feet of height. The person who was not able to walk perfectly in the first six parts is now able to stand perfectly and walk in the seventh part. You see, you can see the photo here. See, the first six parts, how is it? Uh, he can't walk perfectly. The last seven part, he can stand perfectly and walk. Uh, uh, so what does this represent? What is the first six parts where he's, he's struggling to walk represents? Uh, what is the seventh part uh, where he can stand perfectly and walk represents? Uh, that represents, dear brethren, the 6,000 years of sin where mankind is not able to walk perfectly because of sin in this world. Though they want to walk, though they want to do good, they're not able to do it because of the evil influence. But once Christ returns, he's going to bind Satan for a thousand years. And the last thousand years, the last seventh part, he can stand perfectly because of Christ ruling, because of his grace, and reach what? Reach the queen's chamber, the earthly salvation. So, God has made a plan through Jesus to bless the entire world. So in the thousand years, what will happen? The mankind will start walking up the highway of holiness and come to perfection. This is what is shown in the pyramid. What is brother? Awesome, brother? God's beautiful plan. Heavenly salvation, earthly salvation. Narrow way, 
the Broadway and the highway. Got it, brother? Mm, brother, yeah, I, uh, this was my... Uh, <laughs> Go to the notes also. Okay, I'll send you the YouTube link. Okay, please listen to it also, okay? Okay, brother, okay. Okay, thank you. Um... Uh,